Hello, here is Rainer Hoffmann Wellenhof from the Medical University of Graz in Austria and I want to tell you something about acral melanocytic nevi. First you have to remember a little bit the anatomy of the glabrous skin. So we have ridges and we have also furrows. It's important to know that the furrows are smaller than the ridges. This is the histology of an acral skin. We can see the ridges and the furrow in between. And this structure, like a corkscrew, is the duct of an egg green sweat gland. The opening is right on the top of the ridges. And these structures correspond to these white dots you see here in the dermoscopy on the top of the ridges. So now we know the most important structures of the glabrous skin. Here we see a scheme with the furrows and as white structures the openings of the sweat glands. If we have now pigmentation, we look if this pigmentation is in the furrows and if it's distributed in a parallel way. If this is the case, we have one stereotypical acral nevus with the so-called parallel furrow pattern. Here we see an acral nevus with a parallel furrow pattern. We see the pigmentation is in the furrows because these are much smaller than the ridges in between. So this is a complete benign nevus. The next type of acral nevus I want you to show is more or less a variation of the parallel furrow pattern. In this uh, we find also pigmentation crossing the ridges and therefore it's forming a lattice and this nevus is called acral nevus with a lattice-like pattern. Here you see such a beautiful example of a lattice-like pattern in an acral nevus. We have here in the furrows the pigmentation and then here the crossing pigmentation surrounding the sweat clan in the middle. Tiny, fine and thin pigmented lines crossing the ridges and the furrows are forming the next pattern, the so-called regular fibula pattern. Here you see such an example of an fibula acral pattern. The pigmentation is like drawn with a pencil over the ridges and the furrows. The next pattern is the globular pattern, which can be also present in an acral location. And here you have an example. So here we see the globules along the ridges and the furrows. Finally, we have also on acral location a homogeneous pattern. Here you see an acral nevus on the palm showing a homogeneous pattern. But which pattern can we see here? We don't really see a parallel furrow pattern, nor we see a globular pattern or a homogeneous pattern or a lattice-like pattern. So we have to call this an atypical pattern. This is a nevus with an atypical pattern. Koger and Saida published in the archives of dermatology a very useful and practicable algorithm what to do with acral lesions. 
So if we have a typical parallel furrow pattern, like in this case, we shouldn't do anything. The same for the typical lattice-like pattern, as you can see here, a beautiful example. And also if we have a typical fibula pattern in a small lesion, no action is required. If we have none of these typical patterns of acral nevi and uh, the lesion is smaller than 7 mm, Koga and Saida suggest a follow up of these lesions. In this case, with this atypical pattern, I would do a short follow up within three months. If we have an atypical pattern, like here we have an atypical fibula pattern larger than 7 mm, a biopsy is recommended by Koga and Saida. Also here we see an atypical pattern. You see here these irregular globules and here a homogeneous area. Also we see different colors. Of course, in this case, a biopsy is required. I hope you find this short introduction uh, interesting and if you want to hear more about acral melanoma, go to the podcast Acral Lesions 2. Thank you for your attention.